to this somber day in Holy Week. It's uh, Good Friday. Uh, it's the day that we remember uh, that Jesus was crucified uh, for our sins and the sins of the rest of the world. Normally, I would read to you a little piece from the Bible, uh, and then what I'd do is I'd give you a thought. But today, instead of one piece from the Bible, I'm going to read seven really short pieces, and then we're going to link those together. First, Luke 23, verse 34. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, verse 43. Today, you will be with me in paradise. John 19, verse 26. Woman, behold your son. Matthew 27, verse 46. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? John 19, verse 28. I thirst. John 19, verse 30. It is finished. Luke 23, verse 46. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. The Gospels record that during the six hours Jesus was hanging on the cross, he made seven different statements. Hence the seven little snippets I just read to you. Uh, these statements are huge uh, because they're the last words of Jesus before his death. They, they demonstrate quite clearly um, that Jesus was consistent in his life and in his message right until the end. So we're going to look at those one by one. Luke 23, 34, that's the first one. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The first uh, of the seven sayings shows that he was thinking of others right until the end of his life. Even while experiencing the horrible pain of crucifixion, he was praying for the very people who caused his suffering. Uh, he came to earth for the purpose of forgiving sinners, and he loved them and forgave them right up until the end. It was because of people's sin that he was on the cross suffering on behalf of that sin. Secondly, Luke 23 verse 43. Today you will be with me in paradise. Not only did Jesus forgive those who crucified him, he also forgave one of the thieves crucified next to him. When the thieves were put on the cross, uh, both of them cursed Jesus. But as time went on, one of the thieves had a change of heart. Uh, let me read you that uh, 39 to 42 portion of uh, Luke 23. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due rewards of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And this is where Jesus made the second statement, promising to forgive the thief who asked. Again, we see Jesus' concern for others. Thirdly, we get this. John nineteen twenty six. Woman, behold your son. As Jesus continued to suffer on the cross, his mind was still upon others. He saw his mother standing near the Apostle John <clears throat> and said, Woman, behold your son. Then he looked at John and said, Behold your mother. Now by doing this, uh, he was entrusting the care of his mother to John. Uh, the law required the firstborn son to take care of his parents, and Jesus was obeying the law uh, right up until the end. Fourth then, Matthew twenty seven forty six, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The fourth saying of Jesus from the cross 
is probably the most difficult for us to stomach. Uh, the sinless Son of God, who had been for from all eternity in an intimate relationship uh, with his Father, is now spiritually separated from him. I don't know if we even understand that. Uh, when the sins of the world were put upon Jesus, there was, for the first time, separation between Father and Son. The Bible shows something happened between them that we can only understand through faith. Uh, the Father was placing the sins of the world upon the Son in order that everything in the universe that had been affected by sin uh, could again be made right with God. Jesus was suffering the pain and separation that we deserved. Uh, in order for this to happen, the Father had to forsake the Son and punish him on her behalf. It's tough stuff. Fifthly then, John nineteen twenty eight, I thirst. Uh, the fifth statement that Jesus made from the cross reminds us again that he suffered as a human being. The full uh, section is this. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished and that scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. He lived as a man and suffered as a man in order that he could identify with suffering humanity. Uh, from this statement, we see that Jesus suffered the full physical effects of crucifixion. No shortcut as the weight of our sins was placed upon him. Uh, the sixth one then, John 19 verse 30, it is finished, it is finished. Uh, the sixth statement um, was a victory statement, but what was finished? It could be more than one thing. Uh, firstly, Jesus had to finish the job the Father had sent him to earth to do, namely to provide salvation for humans. By living his entire life without sin, uh, Jesus was able to become the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. No more animal sacrifices were necessary. Um, they only pointed to the perfect sacrifice Jesus had now offered. He, um, his was the final sacrifice, which sacrificed the righteous demands of a holy God. Second thing that was accomplished uh, was fulfilment of prophecy. Uh, the predicted Messiah had come as God promised he would. Uh, the Saviour was promised and now Jesus Christ, the Saviour, had come and accomplished the promised salvation. Third thing that was accomplished by Jesus' death on the cross was the victory over the devil. Uh, 1 John 3 verse 8 says, One of the purposes for Jesus' coming was to destroy the works of the devil. Uh, his death finished that task. The dominion over the earth that man through his sin had handed over to the devil was now won back. Uh, when Jesus Christ comes back again, he will take hold of the victory he won over the devil on the cross. Fourth, uh, final reason that Jesus says it is finished is about his own suffering. Uh, Jesus spent th over 30 years upon the earth living among sinful humans, suffering, uh, in a sense, with the limitations of that existence. He had now had the final six hours of that suffering on a cross. This was now finished. He would no longer have to suffer, in a sense, uh, the limits of space and time. It was finished. And seven then, uh, Luke twenty three forty six. Father into your hands, I commend my spirit. This is the final statement that we have from Jesus before his death. Everything had been completed and now it was time to dismiss his spirit. Uh, Jesus had previously made the statement that he would willingly lay down his life for his sheep. Uh, John 10, 17-18 Therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. 
So, uh, having gone slowly through them, uh, we can see the seven statements Jesus made from the cross. They've still got power today. They've still got power today. Uh, they remind us that uh, his death, besides being a fact in history, was, was more than that. It was the supreme sacrifice uh, that secured our salvation. All his final words show us that we can have confidence that he was the Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah, and it really was a good Friday. I've got four questions, as usual, for you uh, to help you maybe soak up what uh, I've just been talking about. Here they go. Number one, any of these seven statements resonate with you? Any, any, any one particularly catch you? Uh, secondly, any of these seven statements that you really struggle with? I mean, I said, you know, tough stuff. Any of those that you really struggle with? And number three, I've got to ask this. Do you realise the full significance of what Jesus has done for you? Because of the cross, your sins are forgiven if you accept them. Do you realise the full significance of what Jesus has done for you? And number four, uh, do you realise in that, that in the same way Jesus passed through death, so can we if we are his friends? It's unbelievable, isn't it? Uh, in the same way that Jesus passed through death, so can we if we are his friends. Um, for this Good Friday, I thought as a song, uh, I would uh, play us My Song is Love Unknown. It catches the sentiment, I think. So uh, I'll put that on at the end. And I'll finish with a prayer. So if you bow your heads, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to be born into the world so that all the bad we have done could be put on his shoulders and taken with him when he died. Help us to realise how much you love us and realise that we can be forgiven for anything we have done because of what Jesus finished on the cross. Give us the words to explain Good Friday simply if anybody should ask. Amen. Good to spend time with you today. See you over the next uh, weekend.